so you obviously are extremely well known for the freshman year really i would say tournament run i was looking up some crazy stuff like I'm, i want to go through it because it's it's pretty ridiculous and you said you're a very confident player and you got to be confident to to do this you made your first nine threes in the NCAA tournament that year and that tied sam cassell for a tournament record which i imagine is still there like that's ridiculous to hold that record and but the big one was 17 points in the first half like in the championship game and our own you know this podcast is under the field of 68 and thanks to jeff goodman and rob doster and rob wrote about you and he called it arguably the most memorable half of basketball you'll ever see. And I remember watching it and just watching the highlights over and over. And it just looked like a stream of consciousness. Like, did you, did it feel real at all? You know what, dude, I, I'll be honest. Like it, it happened so fast. And even like thinking back, it, it was such a blur. Mm -hmm. Like, people talk all the time about being in the zone. But, like, I literally do joke with people when they ask me about it now. I was like, yeah, I literally blacked out. Like, <laughs> it was, like, one of those types of experiences. Yeah. Like, dude, and, I, and you know this, but, dude, I promise you, in that first half, like, the, the rim felt like an ocean. Like, I don't even know what was going on. But I just felt like everything I was shooting was just, like, I was like, there's just no way I'm going to miss if I shoot this ball. <laughs> like, um, That's crazy. I, you know, it helps when Louisville probably didn't know who I was. So I had some open looks too. But once you one go through, man. Yeah. You know, and I had been in a good groove and, you know, throughout the tournament and just playing with a lot of confidence. Um, but once I seen that first one go down in that, in that championship game, I was like, okay, like, I still got it. Like, I still got it. <laughs> this is why I hate half times. I am a big proponent of getting rid of half times. Like, Give me like a four minute timeout. We can just sit on the sideline a little bit and then get back to it. Like I, I hate the break of flow. The worst dude. But you know what, for me, I was like, I remember going into half and I was pissed because we lost the whole momentum. You know, we should have been up like eight or 10 going in half. We go up one. But I just remember thinking, I was like, all right, like, hey, I did my job. Like, Trey, you come in and just win us the game. Now. Yeah, somebody do something else here. Yo, Leon can't do everything, bro. Like. I was, uh, you know, but it, it did like in terms of what you're talking about, like the momentum shifted my adrenaline. And like, honestly, I burned so much energy in that first half. Good God. I was going crazy, screaming, yelling, like, and that's just, and I played 15 minutes, which I never do. Yeah. I was, I was exhausted in that second half for sure. Yeah, that it is. It's such a difficult thing to do that I found like for myself where I have like a big stretch of success and like hit like three shots in a row and then there'll be like a lull in play and then i'm like then i start consciously thinking about yeah. what i just did and i'm like oh this isn't unconscious anymore like i gotta like make the next shot and then i start pressing and i'm totally. like i did that in the first half i've done that a bunch of times like big first half and then the second half you're like all right you know i just need like four more points three more points for 20 and then you don't get it in the end of the game you're like what the hell just happened here but it's no. It's the Absolutely. plight. It's like just the plight of basketball and, and having an overactive brain, honestly. It is. I don't wish it on anybody. No, I hear you. <laughs> After that, somebody asked me, I think it was, I was talking to Brendan Quinn. And he was Quinn. talking about, uh, yeah, he was talking about like, I don't remember who, I think it was him, talking about like recognition on campus, like after my Michigan State shot. And I was like, still not not that great like i'm just like the average looking white dude like yeah not really getting much recognition and then i was thinking you know before this interview if i did that on a national stage like the ncaa tournament even as a freshman like i get back on campus and i feel like it'd be a totally different feel like after you were on game day college game day if i remember correctly right or well, oh yeah the following year yeah yeah yeah. So like, did you get back immediately and it was, was it different? And Michigan's a little different because it's a little nerdier. It's a little yeah. nerdier and like, not quite like if you were doing this at IU or something, but I mean, what do, did you feel like a shift in everything? Dude, it was insane. <laughs> and like, I'm like you, man. I mean, I'm, 
five eleven. I, I look like everybody else on campus, right? Yeah. I'll I'll tell you this, like obviously it being in the national championship on that stage, but also like basketball was humming, right? Football was struggling a little bit, basketball was humming. Yeah, yeah. So like, we're jumping on the bandwagon, like everybody was following us into the tournament. And I'll say this too, because I was I was a freshman. I look like I'm twelve years old. So like I was super shy. I you know, I didn't go out really party, do anything like that until after that. Then we'll get into that. But <laughs> but like Dude, my teammates and all those guys, because it was just such a crazy story and just like totally un unexpected, they gassed it so much and like they threw much throw threw so much fuel onto the fire. Like when I got back on campus, like we had this rally at, at Chrysler and like yeah, yeah, yeah. so embarrassed, but they were like, I mean, Coach Beeline was calling me the most eligible bachelor, like just all sorts of crazy stuff. I forgot about that. It was we played, I think that game was like April 8th, you know, and you know, Michigan, we get out early. So we got out like April 21st. We were like two or three weeks left in, in class. And it was just crazy. Like those two or three weeks. Um, and I went from like a virtually unknown who like, I would tell people on like, we go out to parties. It was like, yeah, like, Hey, I'm on the golf team. Like nobody knew who the hell I was. Yeah. When I got back, it was, it was pretty crazy. Well, see, um, I always went after, after school was out in April, I always went down to little five. <laughs> Immediately. Yeah. I mean, I left immediately when I a little five or a Grand Prix at Purdue. Yeah. You're an, you're an indie boy too. Carl, yeah, yeah so. exactly. I, I know, I know all about that. That was always fun. Uh, but you stayed on campus after that? Well, for, for those two and a half weeks, whatever it was, I had to finish class. You yeah, know? yeah. What is it? May master or, or summer one or spring one. Uh, um, I went home, dude. Cause I remember Sanderson, Sandman wanted me to stay and, and train all spring and you know how he is. He's like, dude, we'll get you ready to roll. And I was like, dude, you're crazy. I was like, I'm going home. I was like, we just played a seven month season. I was like, I need a, I need a rest. No, it was a whirlwind. You need a break after that. Like, I don't care sure. if it's a losing season. I need to like disconnect. No question. What was from that? Like, what was the wildest connection or like the wildest hookup? Not not with a woman, but like a, somebody hooked you up with something or like a connection that somebody made, like a, a big name or something like what was like the wildest sort of uh, story that kind of came from that, like after the fact? Um, well, I, I would say I would say two things like the first thing was just and I don't even know, like off the top of my head, but like the amount of celebrities during that game, like who were were tweeting at me and tagging me and stuff and like this twitter was way different then you know it wasn't yeah. really but like i just remember i had all my boys hitting me up back home like yo like reggie bush is tweeting at steve kerr like just random like phil jack i don't even know who like all these crazy names um so that was crazy like, I, i'd love to go back and look um but 